Chapter 947 Queen's Gamble Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D cast. I'm the best guy ever and this is Hippo Gib. Oh, that's my name. Uh, different but the same. That's how it goes. Uh, chapter 947 Queen's Gamble. Yes, Queen, take that gamble. Uh, and cover page, you got Brooke conducting. Now, yeah, actually, you know what? Highly controversial. I have an issue with this cover page. It says, oh, wait a minute. No, never mind. Oh. On, on Manga Stream, it said Brooke conducting a choir of sea cats, I think. And I was like, there's only one sea cat there. But uh, here it says correctly, a choir of seagulls. You know what? Let me go confirm that. I need to know if this is correct or not. Okay, one piece, one piece. Yes, yes. Damn it. It says a chorus of seagulls. Maybe I read it wrong. Fuck. I think they corrected it. I think this is a conspiracy. No, I think you're anyway. just a stupid guy who pays attention Maybe. to the cover arcs. Uh, the cover hey, pages. you know what else? <laughs> Maybe. You know what else? You ever see this guy? The pen name of the guy who submitted this is Noda Skywalker. I've seen that name, I think, all over the SBSs. And I think all over these, like, intro, like, suggestions that he takes from the fan people or whatever. I'm wondering if there's only, like, five people in the world who submit these ideas. Because everyone else just assumes that it's, like, booked. But really, Node is just like, I guess I'll just keep submitting ideas. And then Oda draws it. And he's just winning, winning, winning all the way to the bank. I don't know. But Node Skywalker I've seen many times. Uh, Do you think he's Japanese? Places. Do you think he's a Westabu? I would guess that he's Japanese, but I guess it easily could be that he was Western. I mean, if he could speak Japanese, I, I don't think Oda speaks English based on the little English I see him use, the English on cover pages and whatnot. <laughs> Not too impressive. Um, I, I, I'm, I would guess it's a Japanese person, but who knows, man? Who knows? All right. I'd be very curious about the demographics of like who sends in stuff for like SBSs and, and whatnot. Probably going to be mostly Japanese, but... Okay, anyway, anyway. So here we go. Time for a flashback, everybody, at the beginning of this chapter. Oh, I like these. Yes. These are fun. So, um, the slave collar. Way back mm -hmm. in, in before the time skip. Shabuni Archipelago, yep. Uh, Kami has a collar on her, and Rayleigh rips it off. And we see now that he did the exact same thing with the hacky. Uh, but, uh, you know, back mm -hmm. in those panels, you couldn't see it because they, they didn't have the black thing back then. But he did that, and he threw the collar off, and it blew up. Man, this is, uh, uh, I actually, I forgot that Rayleigh did this in the auction house. I, so, I, was, I was seeing people in the Discord be like, ooh, mm -hmm. look at this this time from before when, when Rayleigh did the uh, same thing, dude, whoa. Okay. Now that I think of it, I mean, yeah, that definitely happened, and it's very interesting. Um, and so, so basically, Luffy has now been able to do this kind of almost, I, I stand by like, okay, what you're doing is you're, you're crushing this thing. Oh, uh, you know what? Okay, I could go into the physics of, like, wouldn't that, like, put strain on their neck if they're, like, not bending it properly? But, okay, whatever. He, he breaks it, well, rips it off. Yeah, I mean, Good we'll job. get a more in-depth explanation of a few panels. Um, uh, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, Luffy remembers it, and he realizes that he just did the same thing with the color, his own collar and, and Hugo's collar. He's mm -hmm, like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop Big Mom. Big Mom's punch. Uh, I, I don't know how I did this this thing with the collar, but I'm going to try it. Uh <laughs> Grandpa Hyogro here is like, the thing Luffy did was vastly superior to the Ryu 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 or the <laughs> Haki that uh, he has been trying to teach him. So he's already yeah, yeah. like, like he's got the skills, he's got the power to do big things. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, big Mom's coming in for a punch and uh, he tries to stop <laughs> it and then they get slapped and they get slapped and oh. smashed into the wall. <laughs> You know, oh, I very much like that panel of them, like, yeah. sticking out of the wall. Like, like very, very <laughs> Looney dead. Tunes there. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's, that's, that's that comedy One Piece does so very well. Excellent. Excellent. So what do you think and of And then that? Luffy... Uh, well, okay. So, so the obviously, like, the, the substance he here... Didn't, uh, he didn't actually block Big Mom. Uh, right. I think the is, fact is that he generally failed. good. I, I think it's it's totally fair um, for... Okay, so we're, we're learning that, like, this ability... Okay, so I, I guess they're, they're really trying to clarify that this ability to, like, break things with hockey power is the same as the, like, deflection power. It's just, like, if you're, like, projecting it outward or sticking it into something. Like, okay, fair enough. 
And Luffy has done it so far like exactly once, well, technically twice, on his own collar, which was done off screen, I guess, and on uh, on Hyogoro's. It, it makes sense that Luffy wouldn't have like perfectly mastered it after one time, so I, I have no problem with this. I guess I could perhaps like question how Luffy or Hyogoro survived this. I mean, I'm not really surprised Luffy survived at all, but Hyogoro, um, th this is where you get into the more cartoony aspect of One Piece. Like, Hyogoro is basically perfectly fine, even though if a normal human was launched at this speed, I mean, well, they'd definitely be dead. He, um, I mean, he's not perfectly fine. He says he used um, Haki to guard himself, which you know he, oh, you yeah, know he can that is use. True. But even then, he's like got a big boo-boo, and he's sort of dying, but not really. He, I mean, for a moment it looks like he's dying, but then he does an epic, like, dodge. So I, I think that's kind of played for laughs, that, like, it looked like he was going to die, but then he's totally fine. <sighs> that's how I read it anyway. Um, so, I don't know. I think this is perfectly reasonable. Uh, I, I have no major problems with this. It, you know, One Piece is being a little bit silly. Hey, man, that's the series. I got, I got no issues. But I'm oh, very yeah. glad to be getting more info. Oh, oh and I, while we're on here, before this happens. So we finally get the kind of breakdown of exactly how hockey works that we've been waiting for. And this answers many of the questions that we've had uh, and, and some of the, not contradictions, but mysterious things that we were discussing even last chapter, which was, okay, so when you're using Ryuo or hockey or whatever, so you got your invisible armor that surrounds your body. So it's not even necessarily just that your skin is super hard, it's that you have an actual invisible armor around your body, like not physically touching you, like projected. So, okay, cool. And you can use that and it makes you strong and you can punch things and it deals damage. But the advanced thing that we're talking about that, that Rayleigh and Luffy have now done is you, you take that same aura that's projected around you and you stick it into stuff. You stick it into things, and I guess that's like a destructive force when you do that, and well, it destroys them. It's from, not. It's like, the same kind of like force power, I guess. It's like it's, instead of defensive, it's offensive. Well, it says destroy from the inside out, so it's not like it yeah. pushes into something to destroy it. It just sort of like appears inside it and then rips it apart from the inside. I guess. Like if you were to like activate a force field, and then mm -hmm. the edge of the force field cuts something in half. Or like a portal. Um, that's, that's how I'm thinking about it. Like if there's there's like a film or like a, an area around your your arm, um, it sort of like materializes and then the it sort of like cuts on the edge, mm -hmm. rather than like I pushing mean, I... from the inside of your hand outwards. Well, if, okay, if that's how it works, and not to be overly nitpicky, but in last chapter and now, when we see the flashback of Rayleigh crushing Kami's collar when he was saving her, like, we see that it, his hand is physically crushing the metal down at least a bit, and then it's, like, to the side, we see it, like, being ripped. You know, that's... Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think... The, the, this illustration here to show the differences between normal armament hockey and the special thing... I don't mm -hmm. think um, it's exagger as uh, uh, as exaggerated as this. I think it's this just sort of like the <laughs> like um, uh, the, the the crushing motion is just sort of how you control that like grab. I don't know. Well, I mean, okay. I feel like there's. I mean, this is somewhat important. I I feel like uh, the the two images here are showing like the dichotomy of the different you know strengths of this or whatever. On the one hand, you've got a hand wrapped in hockey, does a punch. And it just, it, it like, it bounces the block off of that armor and it, you know, gets cracked. It does some damage. Whereas with the second level, it's, it's not that that armor just, like, punches it so hard that the block shatters. I feel like it's that instead of the block bouncing off the edge of the aura, it's that that block actually enters the aura. And while within that aura, it's, like, bombarded by... I, you know, like, general destructive force energy power that is hockey, I guess. And, yeah. like, that's what's doing the destroying. That's what I'm, that's what I'm gathering. Uh, now, the interesting thing about this is, okay, so with Luffy and how Rayleigh use it so far, okay, I get it. Um, although, okay, sorry, but I was going to talk about, like, Zoro and hockey and swords and stuff. But before I get to that... So, hang on. So, I'm still a little confused about... Okay, the way that this is describing it and the way that it has been introduced to us so far. Like, Luffy blocking Big Mom's attack, right? Clearly, the idea with that is to create armor. 
It's not to like destroy mom, Big Mom's hand as she's hitting you, to like destroy from the inside out the way that they did with the collar and whatnot. It's to put up a barrier, a reflective barrier, that's so strong that it reflects Big Mom away and stuff. So I'm still rather confused why it's implied that like Luffy, who clearly has like level one hockey or whatever, needs to hit level two because it, it, it sounds like they're saying level two has this like enters the body destructive capacity, but that's not what Luffy's trying to do to Big Mom. He's just trying to deflect her attack as yeah. Rayleigh did with that elephant um, before the flashback. I, yeah, I think that is a bit See of like I mean? crossed wires here. Like, um, yeah. like what, what is the defensive push? I, they, they say it could be used defensively as well as offensively. Offensively is getting the collar off. I get that. Offensively is in like a I guess counter? Perhaps I they know. mean like level two armament hacky is just like you can do the defensive stuff more powerfully as well. I, I get that, but like it's kind of weird the way they frame it here. Because like the, the, it, the Rayleigh collar breaking thing seems like a totally separate power from the whole deflection thing. And it's it's almost weird that they're like so emphasizing the like collar deflection thing. But the skill that Luffy is trying to learn right now is just like powerful reflective armor. And d does that necessitate this whole enter the enemy's body, reflect, you know, deal, destroy from inside out? It sounds like that's just a separate power. Now don't get me wrong, it seems really useful. Uh, I'm glad it deflected and did, you know, lots of, you know, was able to rip off the collar and save Kami. That's all cool. But I, hopefully people understand what we're saying here about how it's a little weird the way, like, the levels are being described here. I mean, I know we're a little bit overanalyzing it, as we tend to do. Basically, what they're getting is Luffy just needs extra strong defensive armor. And maybe it's, like, mixed in with this, like, destructive force because it's supposed to, like, be a super strong counter. Like, like fucking Wobbuffet in Pokemon. Like, he's, like, the counter Pokemon. So, like, when he does a counter, it's that you hit him and he hits back like twice as hard and takes like very little damage from it or whatever. I, is this level two power somehow involved in that like hyper-powered counter ability? Yeah, Cause it I think, really doesn't seem to say that. I don't yeah, know. I, th I think it is a separate thing. I think like on the next page, he's saying like, you've already yeah. learned how to utilize the large amount of hacky surrounding your body. You mm -hmm. have simply, mm -hmm. you have simply yet to realize it. And then he, like, pretend dies. But, like, I think what this is going for is, like, yeah. you clearly have, you know, the ability to harness this mm -hmm. in more imp powerful hacky than the regular armament hacky. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's only confusing because there's two different techniques that are yeah. of level two yeah. and they're being conflated when they and shouldn't be. And it seems be. like the one that Luffy, that, yeah, I, I think that that's dead on. And the one that Luffy like has been practicing, it seems like, is not the one that he just used to save the both from ripping off the collars, is what it seems like to me. Um, I don't know, people can clarify. Basically, look, I like all the abilities being shown off here. I think they're cool, but things just seem a little confusing with the way that Oda's depicting them. Um, it, it, you know what I mean, it, guys? Yeah, it yeah. feels like... I, I can't remember, like, off the top of my head, but, like, mm -hmm. a, when a devil fruit is introduced, you yeah. don't get all of the information immediately. True. Um, Which is appropriate, because it's, like, a one-time thing. You gotta yeah. watch the guy and learn but, powers and but stuff. But, like, you, you can... You do get, like, the basic fundamental rules of the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's just, like, easy to understand. Luffy is made of rubber. Luffy's made of rubber. Yeah. So what does rubber do? You think of all the things rubber does in the real world, and then you get it. Mm -hmm. There is no hacky equivalent in the real world. So every bit of information is important into understanding the basic rules. We're still learning the yeah. basic rules of how this works, which is, mm -hmm. like, whatever they want, really. Oh, yes. Whatever, yes. Is a, whatever is required for Luffy to be powerful enough to defeat, you know, or, like, to block Big Mom, or to get a collar off is like... And I don't want to... I actually... I had a lot of joy getting to the beginning of this chapter and seeing the flashback to... Because, like, I was absolutely someone who was like, oh, my God, how did Rayleigh get that collar off? And now that... Do I think that Oda had necessarily planned out all of this stuff? No, absolutely not. I do not think that. But I find the answer to be, you know, perfectly reasonable. It makes enough sense for me to be happy. So, like, that that's a very positive feeling to have, like, I mean, an old question answered. I feel like it could be that mm -hmm. Oda 
Like, this this doesn't, like, make it better or worse or anything. I do think uh -huh. Oda may have planned that as a hacky thing, since Rayleigh is the guy, the hacky guy, who teaches Luffy yeah, all the things. Yeah, it's possible. It's just, uh, he may not have planned this to be the way he, Luffy makes the connection with that. Um, yeah, I'd say that's very unlikely, the specifics, but... Yeah, yeah but, like, like, the idea of hacky being able to tear something from the inside out, that's, like, mm -hmm. that's a cool unusual thing for like uh, an armament thing to do it, true it's just like I, I would ask people like if this is how Oda always planned it and again I don't even really care if he did it's fine as it is but like when has it been used this way ever before um, there's you know the, the, the time Rayleigh ripped off the collar that we're now you know explain to us it's this thing I can't think of a single other time that we've seen this power being used in like this destructive e kind of way as opposed to just like a counter block e way and hey, if those are the same thing then fair enough but i don't know seems, I, uh, I just i just had a brain blast i just had a big yeah. thought mm -hmm. what if right pell was using yes. hacky when he was when he was flying up and that's why he's fine I'd say that's some pretty hacky writing there. Well, what, what if, if uh... what if what if uh, Pedro was using hacky every time he blew himself up? Oh, that's smart. That's smart. Uh, he's coming back <laughs> any day now. He's gonna stroll in. He's probably in the ship, the Big Mom ship. I'm sure he's fine. It's gonna be great. Pedro's probably well... gonna be the reason Jimbei gets out alive. <laughs> His dismembered body will be the answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. All that aside, more answers about hockey, a little bit of confusion, but I think we get the gist, yeah. even if things are presented in a slightly confusing way. Got it. Counter powers, Luffy needs to get stronger. It's got these destructive powers. Cool. Oh, oh, the only other thing I was going to say about all this was, so, so there was no discussion directly of, like, imbuing it into swords the way Zoro and, I don't know, maybe Mihawk and other people do it. Um, that seems to be implied that's how, like, the black swords become black or whatever. Um... And so uh, it's pretty cool that uh, I, I guess that we're this like this destructive energy discussion about like destroying things from the inside out on. It makes a lot more sense to me when discussing like how Zoro has used his swords in the past to like cut through things he shouldn't be able to cut through normally. To me, that's like, oh, OK, like so now we're specifically discussing like the destructive force that Armament Hockey has. This makes sense for like a swordsman um, to to cut things it shouldn't normally be able to cut um yeah i don't know i don't know just thought that was uh it, it, we're kind of answering some of those questions as well with this I, I feel like there will be more discussion on like how swordsmen can use it because it sounds like it almost seems like there's it's like a special thing when swordsmen use it it's like its own category almost but uh i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm reading too much into it regardless uh pretty cool pretty pretty cool yeah so Hyogoro mm -hmm. uh, fake dies, and then Big Mom goes in for another punch. Uh, Hyogoro flies away, so he's fine. Mm -hmm. And then Luffy is being attacked, and the the, the, the entire prison gets rampaged through. Because uh, Big Mom is still mad that uh, Luffy ate the Oshiruko. Tr true, but hey, don't don't skip over on page... Um, well, I was page? about to say, there's a face okay, here. Okay, okay. There's a face yes. here of a guy who I think we saw earlier in a, in a silhouette. As, some like, people, so, so one of the Yakuza members or something. You know, people posted that. I looked at those images pretty carefully. I didn't think this guy looked like any of those silhouettes very much. There was there was one that had sort of, like, uh, antenna sort of hair things, and this guy also has those. I suppose it could be that. I thought it looked a little different. Um, I mean, for sure, enough. this is, like, uh, showing at least one of the many inmates who are going to be freed in this in this in in the coming... Uh, uh, pandemonium. Well, th that's for sure. That that's certainly for sure. Um, uh, yeah, whether it was specifically someone shown in a flashback, maybe. I'll, I'll look at those images again. But I must point out, this is also possible. That, he that <coughs> excuse me, that hat head thing is not super unlike a Kappa's head. So this this could be our Kappa, our Kappa swords. I I really don't think so because no, this is this is showing inside the iron factory. And he's or mm -hmm. he's still chained up with a bunch of other people who are also chained up. Kappa was in a special hmm. cell. Th that's true. That's true. Uh, you could be right. That, that that could be true. I could be wrong about that. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll learn more in the next chapter or two or whatever. We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So yeah. this person's whatever. Pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing more of them. Other people there. Um, Big Mom's still rampaging, and and Queen, thank God, is back on his feet. Queen is yeah. up. 
He is not a total scrub. My prayers are answered. Yeah. He's he's looking even a, actually considering the amount of beating he took last chapter from Big Mom, he's seeming pretty tough. He's seeming pretty tough, which is good. I'm very happy to see that. Yeah, I mean, I think what happens in this chapter with the Queen is exactly what I hoped. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> well, yeah, let, let's get to that. He, he, so he, Big Mom he, does a big. He, oh yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, he got up. He got up like a badass. And he's like, okay, mm-hmm. we gotta beat this shit out of Big Mom. And he says, she's gonna rampage through the whole prison. Uh, and then she's gonna come back around here, and I've got a plan. And so she does this. I don't know how long it takes, but presumably not that long, because she's yep. very good at smashing. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, a she's, lot she's of prison... like top tier. Wins yes. lots of tournaments at Smash. Oh, she's smashing. She's smashing at smashing. <laughs> uh, so she comes back round. A lot of the prison has been destroyed, and I assume a lot of prisoners are now able to walk around freely, which mm-hmm. will be cool that to see how they all decide to, uh, I don't know riot or whatever that's gonna happen for sure there's gonna be some shit with that (laughs) and then queen is up high watching down on her and she sees like a a, a, like a a dummy oshiruko thing she opens it oh there's nothing in it but she looks up big old that's silhouette that's silhouette up there of a dinosaur of a brachiosaurus looming overhead (laughs) is go 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 it's doing the anime things very, very yeah. cool. I, I really very love the, the, the one panel where he's jumping because you can see how short his arms and legs are and it looks really yeah. funny. He looks hilarious. And then, but he does a, a flip over, head down, ass up. That's the way we like to fuck, Big Mom. And bam, Brachio Bomber, baby, right on her fucking head. Oh my God, that was, it's a big fucking dinosaur. Headbutts from the goddamn sky. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like to see, Queen. Fuck yes. <laughs> Um, this, uh, so this was clearly intended to be, like, the redemption moment for Queen. Because, god damn, was that satisfying. Yeah. A big, look at that big fucking swole-ass neck, a huge fucking dinosaur. He's fat as fuck. God, but he's his muscles a, are rippling on his body. Guy. God damn, it's visceral. Oh, it feels good. Um, the, the, okay, my, so, so, boom. Big Mom takes a big hit. Uh, her brain gets a little jostled, and, oh, here comes her memory. So she is not, in fact, wounded seemingly, well, maybe a little bit. It's, it's a little hard I to mean, tell. C- basic, based on, like, the idea of, like, Whole Cake Island, the whole plan with Beji is was to, the mm. only way to damage her in any way was to make yeah. her, f- uh, like, f- be emotionally traumatized or whatever. You, right, right, the pa- we should stick with picture. that, probably. Like, she is invulnerable, or, like, largely invulnerable. So yes. this even having any effect is pretty impressive. It is very impressive. So it's it's a little, it's like, it's like we all kind of wish Queen could have, like, you know, maybe, like, done a little bit better. But, but uh, it, it, like, it doesn't impress very much that she seems to, like, just got her noggin jogged a little bit. But considering that she's, like, supposed to be literally invulnerable, even that much, like, it's not, it, it's not much to sink your teeth into, but the moment was incredible, and the like the fact that it had any effect, we should yeah, we should take note that it did something. So yeah. good work, Queen. Good work. So he he jostles her noggin, and she remembers her crew, mm-hmm. and she's got so she's all back. her memories back. She's no longer Olin. She is now Big Mom <sighs> again, and uh, she's going to be evil from now on. I guess more or less, more or less. Uh, so Certainly she amoral. she turns around like Queen's like does a big old Queen face like oh my god she's <laughs> she's no freak Hello. away she's still alive ah. <laughs> all the crews like like that we're that we're gonna die this mm-hmm. is this is the end and then she falls over and starts being asleep now of course the question comes up was this due to Queen or did she just fall asleep I think she just fell asleep and that Queen it's not because he just hit her on the head or anything this is my theory. What do you think? Um, my theory is that uh, it's a fifty. Per- it's a fifty-fifty. Fifty percent mm-hmm. head noggin bash uh, made her a little drowsy, mm-hmm. and then also she was hungry, so she fell over and slept. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to give Queen as much pre- credit as possible, frankly, but not not if it's if it's unwarranted. Um, and let me just say one thing. So okay. So they they grab the the sea stone chains uh, and the the handcuffs and whatever. So they're wrapping. Big Mom up tight. So this, and they they fucking do it, man. They wrap her up. They got her in sea stone and shit. If she woke up, it's hard to know if she would actually be able to break out because of you know sea stone's power draining effect. But she's Big Mom, so who, who really well, knows? Well, I mean, based on the way that the the sea stone here has been said to be not as strong as regular sea stone, 
Well, he does say pure sea stone chain, so clearly he he's say? trying to. Yeah, yeah. This is bringing me some pure sea oh, stone chains. Oh, yeah, yeah, pure. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when well, would? Uh, hmm. I don't know. She's, I mean, it, it's she hard certainly to say. won't be. I don't think she'll be more vulnerable, or maybe she will. I mean, the reason she hit her head and mm -hmm. lost her memories in the first place was because she was underwater and therefore weakened. I assumed. Oh, that is, I mean, yeah, people did think that, which is, you know, not a not a crazy thing to think, I'd say. Yeah, hard to know. Hard to know. There's a lot of factors there. You probably couldn't kill her, but uh, she mm -hmm. she might not be able to get out. But I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, f I feel like the most likely mobile. thing is that either she gets... No, actually, there's no way she's going to get to Onigashima. I think you don't her think so? crew... Her, well... If she does, then it's just her and Kaido are just there. And, like, yep. what are they going to do? Are they going to beat the shit out of each other? That's a whole big battle thing. You can just try to kill her, I guess, while she's all chained up. I think I think what might happen mm -hmm. is on the way, her crew, the whole cake crew, will intercept. And mm -hmm. we won't know what happens exactly, but then she will show up on Onigashima when the big plan for Onigashima is going to happen, whatever that Let's... plan is. Yeah, the big invasion or whatever. Big okay, invasion. let's talk. Let's because that's that's relevant to what I one thing I wanted to talk about. Let's talk Big Mom's involvement again. It so so Big Mom was definitely responsible for like I think what's like the a jailbreak has heavily been implied to be what's going to happen next. Um, they're going to find allies here. It's going to be all the old mobsters who were thrown in here, people who didn't swear allegiance. So they're going to get lots of samurai and people to join their team. That's that's going to be all cool. Um, so it's a little bit frustrating to me that Big Mom is so vital to this happening because, again, it, it was not planned. This was pure luck that, like, any of these things happened. And it's not that, like, our characters, like, did anything correctly to get into this situation. It's simply that Big Mom happened to be here. And not only well, is that annoying because it robs the agency from our characters, it's okay. also that I'm specifically bored of Big Mom, as I've said before. Her okay, arc was that, last that's all right. To, to be yeah. bored of Big Mom is one thing. I don't think it, I like her, her involvement still, of course. is, mm -hmm. like, a bad thing, because to fight Kaido, yeah. uh, like, one of the four emperors, is, like, a massive undertaking. I think without Big Mom, like, weakening them in some way, uh, it would be kind of ridiculous that Luffy, even with all the allies he may uh, accrue, would be able to defeat Kaido. I... I, well, okay, I mean, that idea I hate even more. The idea that, like, Big Mom is what allows them to defeat Kaido. It's well, like, can we get our characters some agency? Can we let them do something for themselves? Not just have luck or more powerful friends, like, solve their problems for them? That's what I want. I want well, them to, you know... Okay, well, there's that... I, I just... Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one thing, right? We can disagree sure. on that. But I don't think that her being here is, like, random, because the whole reason she's chasing after them is because of the fucking, you know, the fuck-up that they did, the whole ruining of the wedding and destroying of stuff that they did at her base. She hates the Straw Hat Pirates, and so she's chasing them. Like, I don't think it's, like, too out of place for her to also be here. I mean, I know it's, it's bloating not, it's not the, the amount of characters, and it it's just, like... Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate the it's idea that in order to defeat, me. like, the strongest guy in the entire, like, in, of the whole sh thing, like, he's yeah. been said they to be the strongest. He's the strongest beast, or, you know, whatever that, that, that means. Yeah, I mean, the strongest it, yeah. dragon. But, like, I don't know. I feel well, like, I, I, I feel like, um, mm -hmm. Big Mom shouldn't be, like, in the fight to maybe kill Kaido, or whatever it is, but, like, her mm -hmm. being here and disrupting things in order to allow for, you know, certain things to take place, like Luffy liberating all of these criminals on his side. Like, I don't know. I don't think it's Luffy that Luffy did that bad. shit. I mean, because we've seen this happen before in Impel Down. And again, like, Luffy relied on many allies to save him. But, like, it was like, it was Mr. Two who really helped uh, Luffy in that situation. And that was one where, like, it was because Mr. Two had been so nice, or Luffy had, had been so nice to Mr. Two in the past. They were buddies. It was like, like, his actions were directly responsible for why he was able to get out of Impel Down in one piece. Like, he was really the the arbiter of those. But in this I mean, situation... Yeah. I mean, this is not know, as cool as Impel Down in any yeah. way. In, yeah. I still, and again, these are generally nitpicks. 
I don't hate that Big Mom is here. I just, I, I consider it, because I said this is multifaceted, I consider it mostly like kind of a wasted opportunity. I think Luffy could have been training against uh, Queen instead of Big Mom. I don't think we really needed her to be the one that he's like practicing against. Um, and I, like you said, I think it's kind of just bloating the cast with like, I don't know, quote unquote, like fan favorites. Big Mom is one of my favorite characters. But just like with Law or anybody who I feel like isn't necessary to be as prevalent in the story as they are or, or anything like that. I, I Like, I want the characters who it feels like it's their time to shine and to do things to get the spotlight. Um, so I, I feel like Big Mom's arc is mostly done in Wano at this point. But I, I live in fear that she will have an uncomfortably large role in the events to come. And that will, okay. like, take the spotlight. I, I know you want, like new characters to have the spotlight but like the idea is mm -hmm. these are the established biggest pirates in the world true like true i i think until she's completely like dead or like in some i mean well here's I a question i can't, I can't imagine question. her i can't uh -huh. imagine her not having a role in the great like war for being the pirate king if she's not well, dead sure. if you know what i mean well, she doesn't have to be dead. She could be... Uh, Oda could have had her doing anything else right now, even if she was chasing the Straw Hats. You know, whatever. Like, uh, fucking stuck on some other island. Um, yeah, uh, but that, that, that feels like hand-waving. Like, why isn't Big Mom trying to become the Pirate Queen when Luffy's getting all the things? She should be uh, tailing it. Like, people could find Look, different no, things to, to complain about. I don't think her being here is, like, terrible. Um, well, I, I would rather it not be the case. Again, I don't think it's, like, terrible, but I think there are... I, I would have written it differently if it was me. And I know I'm not Oda. I know I have no right to, you know, say I would do it better or anything, which I'm not saying. But, um, this particular choice, whatever. I'm, I'm criticizing. It's what it is. What the show is. what we do. But, like, I mean, here's what I think about, about this. It's, like, long ago, um, when Luffy and, uh, Law first made their alliance... Law had, his plan was, we're going to take down Kaido. That was his plan. Okay, literally, how was he planning to do that? Was he planning to have Luffy have to go rescue his uh, crewmate from Whole Cake Island and to bring a, a Big Mom uh, chasing him to fucking Kaido's Onigashima, whatever, and to use her to damage him? I'm like, if that happens, I will be like, well, Jesus, how the fuck would they have done this if Big Mom wasn't involved? Uh, because there's no way that Law could have planned all that stuff. So, you know, I don't know. Questions like this just come to my mind as to how the plan was supposed to work if these relatively random events of Big Mom, you know, being useful to them. Like, what what if Big Mom just showed up, hadn't lost a memory, and just killed Chopper? Like, on that, was that part of the plan? Because that easily could have happened. Um, or, you know, the whole rest I mean of the crew. Law's plan obviously doesn't account for Big Mom because the whole cake thing was not part of any of the plan. So I want to know what his plan was to defeat Kaido, assuming Big Mom wasn't a factor. Because there's no way he could have planned for her. And you know what? You know, Maybe I we mean, will see I mean, I would one. definitely like to, to mm -hmm. hear it because yeah. I don't think we've had him explain what his plan is. I think he's just been around no. and, like, the samurai have been planning an uprising and he's been around. Yeah. Like, I... I'm not sure. I'm I, not sure. Like he, I know he. He couldn't have planned he, he for wanted, the whole Kinemon he planned, thing. He planned the the ability for him to get back at Don Flamingo, which he yeah, did. Yeah, and that that involves you know affecting the smile production, which fucks over Kaido. But that's not a. This is how we take down Kaido specifically kind of plan. This is a. You know how do we upset? I'd, I'd have to. I'd have distribution. to go back and check exactly what he says about the. Ki I mean, I, we, I assume it's very that. simple. Like, uh, I want to take down the warlords. Uh, do you want to do it with me, Luffy? And Luffy's I think, like, yeah. I think something like that. Well, we, we could look it up more. And people, if you remember, if you want to give us details, post them, you know. Maybe Law had as much info as, like, he, he wanted to kill Don Flamingo by setting Kaido on him. Um, but secretly he just wanted to kill... Oh, you know, that you know. might have been true. That might have been I mean, true. That, but that, then again, that, that, that wouldn't that take down Kaido. That was his original Kaido. plan. He said mm -hmm. to... He wanted to set Kaido... On Doflamingo to get rid of Doflamingo. Right, because then, by destroying Doflamingo's weapons, Kaido would be like, where's my weapons, Doflamingo? And then, like, kill him and yeah. stuff. But that's but that a plan was... to take down Doflamingo, not Kaido. Yeah. I mean, mm. yeah. And he also, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure, that, I mean, that didn't go to plan, so he ended up having yeah. to take down Doflamingo himself with Luffy and all that. It, it, um, right, right. Great so, planning, but, that, but that was like Remember part when he got one his arm in getting, off? getting rid of, of Kaido. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know what part two was. I assume now that he doesn't know. have his smiles, now that he doesn't have it, his look, and, and weapons, I'm prepared to he's say, less powerful. But like in exactly how to get rid of him, maybe I, maybe he just has a plan. He hasn't said it yet. I don't even feel like he needed to have every detail worked out. But like, but it, it's just that if like Big Mom, th like this is my biggest concern. Like if Big Mom is directly part of what takes down Kaido. I'll be like, well, gee, what was your fucking plan if that hadn't happened? God damn it! And you know, I, I like, I think forward to those things a lot as I'm um, reading. So does you know, does Law we'll know see. Big Mom is here yet? Does anyone? Mm, I no, I don't think so. Because okay. like Luffy was surprised to see him. Uh, everybody in Kaido's crew was surprised to see her here. I think just well, like you know Chopper what? and you know what's gonna happen then. I know I they think... do know. No, they they, uh, they know. I think as they were talking over uh, Denden Mushi, like Chopper to Law's crew. Or to the rest of the Straw Hats in uh, where Ringo or wherever the fuck they are. I think they did know that they were with Big Mom and that she was subdued or whatever. Uh, okay. Wait, no, that seems wrong. Because why wouldn't they have told... Why wouldn't they have met up and try to figure out what to do? I mean, it's hard to control Big Mom. I think they were... Like, Chopper was the one, like, barely controlling her by telling her, like, Oh, let's go here to get the tasty food you want. And that was, like, the best plan they okay. had at the time. Well, in any case, she's going to be at Onigashima. Yes. Which is going to... Uh, if, Probably. If any, if, I don't think it's going to be part of why Kaido is defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, it may we'll be see. part of why Kaido is defeated, but it will definitely be part of why whatever Law's plan is doesn't go right because he doesn't think Big Mom is going to be there as well. Like, I don't um, think Law... Maybe. I don't think it's going to, like, um, make it impossible. Mm -hmm. I think it may help defeat Kaido, but I don't think it's going to help Kaido with well, any plan. Well, it already like, helps. No... It's already well, definitely going to be part of how they acquire more troops to, like, fight the war or whatever against Kaido and his boys through yeah, the, the jailbreak. The, the thing is, I don't feel like her, you know, accidentally helping nece necessarily means that, like, uh, the plan that he, they came up with was... Uh, like, they didn't have a plan, they were just, like, hoping Big Mom would turn up or something would happen. Like, we'll they probably have, have see, a plan, it's just, like... I mean, plan, I want to know what it um, is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I do as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, no matter. No matter. Uh, I, like, I, I, again, with all these things, it's my it's my fears I'm expressing, but I reserve ultimate judgment until we see how it all works out. But, you know, whatever. But but here it goes, Queen, loading up another Queen, uh, a big, thick Queen. They're, they're both thick Queens. Onto his ship, and off they go. Cool Brachiosaurus yeah, ship. As fast as possible. Like the headmast. Uh, yeah. Right at the end, we see, at the bottom of the page, we see Momo and Otama yep, uh, yep, slipping yep. into the into the prison just before the gates close, the secondary uh, double gate thing. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's all locked off from the outside, and everybody's stuck in there. And then... Uh, there's, so there's no, there's, no, there's no communication? There's no... Yeah, there's no communication. Yeah. A lot of inside. people are... A lot of stuff is smashed up. Luffy's free, and he doesn't have a collar on him anymore. So now mm -hmm. he's going to beat the shit out of everyone here, um, <laughs> and make big best friends with uh, uh, Killer and Kid, and and have good old fun times. See, look at look at this though. Yeah, so he a jailbreak is coming. Luffy's gonna take over, get a ton of allies. This is gonna be a big deal. Um, and fucking, I feel bad for Old Maid. <laughs> he's gonna get his shit pushed in. This weird old elephant chest. Um, but. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, this is just going to be the big event that I think turns the tide. Uh, Luffy lucks into this situation as usual, but that's okay. That's okay. That's how things go for him. He is, he's formed allies. Like, Hyogoro became his buddy due to his, you know, kindness. Th that's like a, that's a good trope to see being rewarded. The same thing that uh, saved him with Bon Clay. You know, uh, back in the day, he was nice to Bon Clay. They were buddies. When he gets into jail, Bon Clay helps him out. Now, he became friends with Hyogoro when he got here. Hyogoro's helped him learn hockey better and stuff is going to help him like you know make yakuza buzzy buddies and uh acquire more allies so that's cool that's cool we'll see uh how it rampages and what the fuck goes down and it, it's almost a little sad that I, luffy says like oh it's it's boring now that big mom and balloon are gone so i guess he obviously he respects big mom strength but i guess he does in fact respect queen's strength as well even though queen didn't like really do much other than attack big mom that one time so, uh, I wonder... Oh, he, like, he caught Luffy's, like, uh, punch and threw it that's away. That's true. He did do that one thing. I, I really wish Queen and Luffy had gotten a chance to, like, fight a little bit. I want to... 
because all we got was like basically one attack from Queen, like one serious attack doing the Brachio Bomber, which was sick. Um, but like, I wanted to know a little bit more about how he fights and stuff. Oh, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say this before. Even that attack, which was really cool, it was like a cool wrestling move or something. It's like I still don't feel like I have a good handle on the fighting styles of like the high level Kaido boys. And I and I want that. I want to see what they do more. We we've seen Jack fight a little bit in that flashback on Zo. He just they shoot gas everywhere. They're just like a bunch of marauders. They shoot gas, they poison everybody. He's got big swords. He smashes thing with his big mammoth trunk. Uh that's all cool. But uh I don't know. Like it, it's it, that's so different from like a one-on-one -on -one, like shonen style battle fight, you know, where like it's Luffy pulling out all the stops against, you know, like uh, like Queen pulling yeah. out all the stops, which would be like like in Eni's Lobby, when Zoro fought Kaku, or Luffy fought Luchi, or, or uh, Sanji yeah, fought feel, Jabura, or whatever. I feel I feel like there hasn't really been a fight yet in Wano. I'm, yeah, and I'm thirsty for it, man. I'm desperate yeah, for like, it. because, like, in, in Whole Cake, by this point, Cracker, uh, at least, oh, was yeah, already yeah. underway. Mm -hmm. Like, he was mm -hmm. a big that fight. Was a real was fight. A, uh, that had, like, a funny... It did have a um, time skip in it, but it was still a real fight. It was good. Like a gear fourth fat attack. Luffy hasn't gone funny. gear fourth once, except I think when he fought Kaido in that one uh, little moment. Yeah, which is fine. You know, it's okay. But I ju I, I'm just hungry for it. That's that's my main point. I'm so ready for the revolution. And I guess that's it. I guess that's all I got to say. Any <laughs> anything else? Um, not really. I mean, this chapter was basically just one event. Like it was big mom the hockey learning out. stuff. Then yeah. knocking out Queen, I mean Big Mom, taking her away, and Luffy's about to cause heck. And it's going to be, that's what's going to happen next chapter. Actually, we might cut away next chapter to I'm other sure characters doing other things. And then we'll cut back and like, oh, Luffy think, took over. The end. I think we might cut to Ashura Doji showing Kinemon whatever he was going to show him. Ooh, true. I am very eagerly awaiting that. Uh, but And apparently, so no, no skip. Apparently there will be a chapter next week, so... That'll be that. We will we will do it. So I guess that's all I got to say. Uh, looking forward to next chapter. Pretty good chapter. There were some good things. Like we said, always got a couple of little nitpicks to make. But overall, as always, I love reading One Piece. And uh, yeah. the real joy is always when you like finish an arc and you go back and read it all over. You know all the answers already. There's no need to nitpick anything. You can just take it as it comes. And I'm very much looking forward to doing that. Yeah. Uh, so, yep. go to the Pod mm -hmm. Discord and chat about pirate stuff with us. Link below. And everybody Link below. In, in the thing, and that's fun. And, and patreon.com. If you want to yeah. have, like, <laughs> uh, special exclusive chats for the higher paid members, mm -hmm. you can go to patreon.com forward slash the Pod Pirates and pledge money to the show. Pledge and $5 get funny... and get into Mar Marie Joie. That's Marie the real Joie. place to be. At least I think that's... Is that Raph Teller Marie Joie for 5 bucks? Marie Joie is like... Uh, that's the $1, isn't it? $1 and up. And yeah. then, like, yeah. Raph Teller is the $5 and up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so and be then a real there's rich more, There's more chats. Like, with every patron pledge amount, there's a whole new chat. And you can say, whoa, I'm, on, I'm in the exclusive chat. And the higher up you go, the less people there is to talk to. So I would just, you know, just, I just recommend you just really pledge fine. like a hundred or like at, at least twenty to become a commander in the in the podcast crew. Um, but okay, that's it, everybody. Thanks for being here. See you next week with another chapter. We're gonna be timely from now on. You'll see. I'll prove it to you, and uh, I'll see you around. Have a good one. Bye. Yo, hoi, hoi.